Rolling. Alright. Okay, hey, this is Justin and Robbie Campbell uh, from Grin Technologies, just back from our trip to Taipei and China. And we're here to show you guys, our customers and fans, some of the things that we brought to Taipei uh, to show our dealers. And, uh, and we thought they could be of general interest to give a little peek, sneak preview on the stuff that we've been up to here. Uh, so first and foremost, I have the Grin Tech through axle hub motor. So this is a direct drive motor, um, very similar in power and performance to the common nine continent style motors. You can see the interstater structure there. Uh, what differentiates it is that it's got a hollow through axle, meaning that it's compatible with through axle suspension forks for which there are currently very, very few electric motor options in the market. Um, and this here is a 20 millimeter through axle hub. Um, with a few inserts, you can have it work with either a 15 millimeter through axle or conventional quick release. I put that on the back side, but uh, <laughs> all the same. Um, the other differentiating aspect of this motor compared to most direct drive motors is just the weight. We've done everything possible to reduce unnecessary metal components. Um, the steel back iron is as thin as possible. There's no extra metal for the flange for the spokes. Uh, we have gaps between the magnets to make the magnet structure lighter, uh, resulting in an overall net weight of less than four kilograms. That makes it in the same weight class as a geared hub motor like the Easy or the Mac or the BMC with all the benefits that a direct drive gives. Um, and it has a uh, spline torque arm interface allowing for positive uh, anti-torque rotation without relying on axle flat so you don't have any concerns about dropout failures. Um, along with the motor, we also brought a example of our next generation of phase runner motor controller. So this is a field oriented motor controller based on a series from Accelerated Systems, a company based out of Toronto, Canada, uh, capable of 96 amps of phase currents up to 95 volt uh, maximum operating voltage. Um, and we produced a small run of these last summer to a very good success, but it, there are also a few points of improvement that we wanted to have addressed before we do another production run. Uh, you can see some of these in here if I compare it to an earlier model, I uh, don't mind the color difference, you see a much, much smaller cable harness. We basically have one wire for the battery plus, another cable for the motor phase wires, one cable for the cycle analyst, and a fourth cable for a throttle. Uh, so just four wires coming out of the controller. The programming, instead of using a separate uh, cable programming connector, you can plug in the programming cable directly into the controller itself. Um, and most critically, we've included a soft start on-off button built into the controller too. So in the previous model, the on-off switch was wired as a pair of wires in the throttle cable and you could hook that up to a physical remote on-off switch. Now there's an on-off switch built into the device. Um, that might not sound too impressive. Um, uh, on-off switches are pretty common features to have on any piece of electronics, uh, but we didn't want to use a mechanical latching on-off switch because those can be uh, prone to failures over time, and since it's a piece of potted electronics, uh, a failed switch would be impossible to service and repair. So we actually have an electronic soft start latching circuit here that turns the controller off and on uh, without any mechanical latching going on. Um, a pair of switch wires is also brought out the throttle cable, so you can have a remote momentary push button, and this lets you switch the power with an inexpensive and very reliable momentary button instead of needing a latching toggle button. Um, and, uh, and because the um, power of the, uh, through the button switch, uh, also powers the cycle analyst and the motor controller, we had to make sure that that on-off switch was robust against short circuits, because any damage to the motor controller is not repairable in this potted device. Uh, so if we connect the cycle analyst, plug that in, Robbie. Mm. So now you can see the operation here. I can turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. If, while well, the cycle analyst is on, uh, we were to inadvertently short out the power. Um, have a nice short prepared. <laughs> So you're riding your bike and you dangle your pair of pliers beside the battery plus lead on your light port. Rather than causing a failure, it just shuts itself off. Push the button and it turns right back on. Um, so those are some of the key features that we've now added to the phase runner motor controller. Um, a last feature that you can't see in this little demo is that the phase runner will show the speed readings on a motor even when you're running sensorless. You don't need a hall sensor to get the speed pickup. So it's now pretty much the most versatile 
psychoanalyst compatible motor controller on the market. Um, and we're really keen, uh, as you can see, we've just moved to a new shop space, which is a big mess of a disaster. Um, but as we lay this out in the coming weeks, we're going to have a, a manufacturing line set up so that we can start uh, rolling these off of our little production line and uh, hope to have them available before the end of the month. Um, and the last thing is in Robbie's hand here. Um, this is a battery concept that we've been experimenting with now for about two years. Um, you see from the, uh, the name LIGO battery. So it's lithium on the go is our uh, idea. And part of the challenge with lithium batteries and electric bikes is that you're not allowed to fly with them. There's a limit of 100 watt hours for the battery size that you can carry on a passenger aircraft. So these are batteries that are broken down to just under 100 watt hour modules, but each battery has its own battery management circuit into it, um, allowing them to stand as individual units or to be trivially connected together and then plug in parallel for whatever capacity you need. So when we were flying to Taipei and to China, me and Robbie had with us three of these batteries each, so 300 watt hours of battery energy that broken up into individual packs, let us uh, keep them in our carry-on baggage, and then at the other end we can snap them together and make them into a larger battery suitable for riding on an e-bike. Um, the geometry of this, you can see we've got um, little plugs that kind of allow them to, to snap together. They also interlock end-to-end -end like this, so depending on the shape of your final application, you can stack the batteries in a number of modular fashions uh, to build up the capacity that you want. You can also connect them in series to make 72 volt or 108 volt battery packs. Um, here we have two different versions. This one is using a very basic battery management circuit. Uh, the one on my left hand here is a prototype using our own in-house BMS system, um, which has an embedded set of uh, LEDs under the surface, allowing us to communicate the state of charge of the battery. It's also got a wireless antenna in it so that you can read the battery diagnostics, set the BMS settings, do all of that through a Bluetooth connected uh, apparatus, whether it's a phone or a laptop. Um, and uh, as future functionality, we're going to allow it so that when the battery packs are stacked together and built up into a large module, they'll be able to behave as though they're one giant battery. So you can turn the light, turn the battery off or on with one button, and it'll turn on and off all the packs that have been connected in parallel, um, allowing you to have a superbly modular and adjustable. Uh, battery pack that can be disassembled into modules that you can fly with and that you can also ship without using class 9 hazardous materials shipping requirements. Uh, so we're really looking forward to, to finalizing our battery management circuit design and our manufacturing technique in order to uh, bring this into production as a, a really convenient uh, battery option for light electric vehicles. And uh, yeah, so those are three little goodies that we were keen to, to showcase to some people in the e-bike industry in Taipei and we're looking forward to making them available to people like yourselves. Alright, thanks. Thanks for your time. Awesome.